Today I will show you how to go from this to that by using Adobe Premiere Pro. But the tips and tricks I will show you can also be applied if you're using DaVinci Resolve, Final Cut Pro or even Luma Fusion. Basically any video editing software that allows you to color grade. Here is our clip straight off the camera. It was shot with the Sony a7R II, 8-bit colors, full HD. So not even the top specs you could expect from cameras available today. And yet we're gonna make it look really nice. I organized my workspace in order to see the Lumetri scope, project, the effect tab, the Lumetri tab, the monitor, and my timeline. I shot my clip at 60 FPS and used a 24 FPS timeline so it gives me the option to slow down my footage at 40% and get a smooth slow-mo effect. I also shot this clip with a flat picture profile, not locked though, but I think it was Cine 2 or Cine 4 maybe. This allows me to get an image that is not too contrasted or saturated yet, which gives me more freedom to color grade. If you shoot with a GoPro, you can choose the color option flat to get this type of color. If you shoot standard or picture profile off, you have less room to play with your colors when editing because everything is already contrasted and saturated. The quality of your image and your grade will start falling apart pretty quickly, preventing you to get good results. Before starting the color grading process, I make sure I add an adjustment layer on top of my clip so I can separate the grade from the clip itself. It is a better way to organize your edits. But if you feel like applying the grade directly on your clip, be my guest. Now let's start the color grading process. Step one, create contrast. Upon checking my Lumetri scope, I see that my clip is a little bit bright but fairly well exposed since I'm not crushing any whites or blacks. The Freediver is maybe slightly overexposed but nothing that can't easily be fixed. Overall, it's a good start and my first goal is to create more contrast by expanding my shadows and my highlights. For this, I can try two approaches. Number one is using the basic exposure tools. Contrast, highlights, shadows, white and blacks. The goal is to contrast my image more. And here is how to do it. Because my image is slightly too bright, I start by bringing my shadows down and my blacks. I boost my contrast to add separation between the highlight and shadows. And because the skin of my subject is too bright, I also bring down the overall exposure and bring down the highlights and whites a little bit. If this image wasn't already too bright, what I would do is actually boost my highlights in order to create more contrast. But in this case, the image requires something a little bit different. Now let's check the before after. That's already a good improvement. But my preferred approach is not to start with the basic tools for light management. I usually start with my curve tool and then fine tune with the basic tools if needed. So let's do this now. I reset all the effects applied and go to my curve tool instead. I will create an S curve in order to darken my shadows and brighten my highlights. Same principle as earlier, but with a different approach, one that is usually gentler and more efficient. See how I am able to impact my shadows much more than just using the basic tools from earlier? We arrive to the same type of result with only one tool. Then, if I want to work more on my lights, I can go back to my basic tools and fine-tune the result even further. I find that the skin of my model is a bit too bright. We can see that here in my Lumetri scope also. It's very close to the top. So let me try to decrease a bit my whites and even my highlights. And because I'm trying to get my skin tone darker, I'm impacting the overall image. So maybe I can try to brighten a little bit my shadows to counterbalance and boost a bit my contrast. I'll bring down my global exposure like before a little bit to get a more cinematic feel. Let's see the before after of the basic tools only and the before after of the curve plus the basic tools. All right, nice. Now step two, adjust my white balance. The goal here is to boost a bit the red color that we lost because we shot underwater without a red filter. For that, I will play with my basic white balance tool. What I'm focusing on right now is the skin tone of my subject. I want it to be more orange purple, so it looks more realistic. I don't care too much about the impact on the blue water yet. We will be able to correct this during our next step. So I boost my orange and purple and even play with my saturation if needed. I'm happy with the skin tone, but now the color of the water is off, which brings us to step three, specific color correction. For this, I will create a new Lumetri effect. 
For the sake of staying organized, I will start giving names to my effects, so I know what they impact. I will call the first effect base and the new one water. Now I go to the HSL secondary tool and toggle the color gray feature to see which colors I'll be selecting. I click on the blue dot to automatically select that color. Let me present you quickly the meaning of HSL. H stands for UA, which is the color you're selecting. S is for saturation, if you want to select the colors that are saturated or the ones that are not, or decide to go for the whole range from not saturated to fully saturated. L is for light, if you want to select the dark or bright side of the image or everything in between. When clicking on the UA of your choice, it automatically selects the whole range of S and L. So now it's time to fine tune the selection. Anything in gray won't be impacted by the changes I will apply later. Here I'm selecting anything that is blue and purple, but I don't want to select the mask that is very dark, almost black. So I will remove the dark light from the selection. But I need to be careful about the other parts of the image that may be selected like the lower left here. So I'll stop it here. Anyway, it's so dark that it's almost black, so any color correction that I apply won't be too obvious on these dark parts of the image. I play a little bit with the saturation tool to remove parts that are desaturated. Then I boost a bit the blur and denoise tools in order to make my selection smoother and not too harsh on the pixels that are on the edge of the selection. Now I can remove the mask being displayed and focus on the color tools and see what works. I have a color wheel and then basic light and color tools. Since I want to alter the purple color, I go to the opposite direction and towards the blue. I could also play with the white balance if I wanted to by bringing a little bit more blue and green. Now let's see the before after with the blue color of the water only. And the before after with the wall color correction we just applied. Okay, I think it looks great already. I could stop here, but let's push it even further and play with the colors of the boat. Because right now, what we have is basically a contrast between two colors, orange and blue. To push it even further, I will try to separate a little bit the colors between the freediver and the boat. For that, I will create another lumetry effect. Call it boat go to the HSL tool and select the orange color only. But by doing so, I also select the freediver. So I need to create a mask to only select the boat. For this, I create a mask at the beginning of the clip. Once I have the mask set, I then create keyframe and refine the mask position as I move along the clip to make sure my selection is always focusing on the boat. This process can be quite time consuming, so I will accelerate that part. Once I'm done with this, I can desaturate a bit the colors so it doesn't look too orange. And to create an even bigger contrast, I can duplicate this lumetry effect call it free diver and click on inverse mask. This time I will focus only on the free diver. For me, she's still too bright. So I will bring down my exposure by using the vertical bar and bringing it down. I can also play with my white balance a little bit in order to fine tune the skin tone color. And here we are. Let's compare the before after. Much better now. Again, I could stop here. It's already so much better, but I will share two extra steps that can also make a difference. Step number five, cinematic effect. I will create a cinematic effect by using a low opacity black and white LUT on top of everything. For this, I create again a new lumetry effect. I apply a custom black and white LUT, but you can use any default black and white LUT included in your editing software. It would work just fine. After applying the LUT, I lower the intensity to around 20%. Here, the black and white LUT is giving me a nice contrast, but blowing up a bit my highlights and the skin tone again. So I go back to my basic tools and lower the highlight and exposure a bit. Now, the good thing about separating your effects is that you can easily go back to one effect and alter it when needed. 
So I go back to my skin tone effect, boost the orange temperature and lower the exposure even further. Then I check before, after. Now that I'm happy with this, I will go to step six and add a warp stabilizer to the clip. Since I slowed it down, I need to nest it before applying the effect. The warp stabilizer effect will not work directly on the clip if you change the speed. That's why I need to nest it so it's set to 100% speed again. Even though the slowdown effect is still here. I drag and drop the warp stabilizer effect and wait for the magic to happen. Sometimes this effect doesn't work well, giving you a wobbly camera movement. One element to check is the auto scale percentage. If you stay below 105%, usually it means the effect is working well. Let's watch it now. Okay, I think I'm happy with that. But to be totally transparent with you, even if this process works, this is not the way I color grade my underwater clips anymore. Over the years, I created several lots dedicated to underwater videos and came up with a simple process to have them fit any underwater clip I throw at them. Let me show you how these work. I apply a fresh adjustment layer and start my process by checking various Maldava underwater lots that may fit the clip. I am not necessarily looking for something that gives me a perfect result straight off the bat, but something close enough. I use the pre-visualization for Mentalot 1, 2, 3, and 4. I think I like the tone of Menta 2. And even though it seems a bit too bright, this will be easy to fix now. I just need to play with my exposure tools. I lower my exposure by using the basic exposure tool because I can see on my Lumetri scope that my model's highlights are being crushed. I bring them back to a safe level. Then I use all the other exposure related tools to fine tune the light of this clip. I can also boost a little bit the sharpness of the clip if I feel like it's useful. Now let's see the before after with this Manta 2 LUT applied. I really like the tone and it was so much easier than starting from scratch. Now let's try another LUT and see what kind of results I would get. I create another adjustment layer, go to creative and we'll try the Manta 4 LUT now. It seems like it's giving me something good too. Again, I play with my exposure tools to fine tune the results. Like before, I make sure I'm not burning any white or blacks and here we are. What I really like about these LUTs is that I don't really need to apply complicated tracking to single out a specific colors. Because they've been created using Lightroom, the color selection is much more precise than with Premiere. These allowed me to get better results, fast track my color grading process and made everything simpler and more fun. If you want to know more about them and about underwater content creation in general, I suggest you check the links available in the description I have tools for underwater photos, videos, and even an online course dedicated to underwater content creation. Thank you for staying until the end. I hope these tips will be useful to you. See you in the next video.